Hello to all of you. In October 2014, I visited several universities in Germany and Austria and have the honor to present my ideas about the digitization of teaching and learning in the 21st century. I'm very grateful to all those who invited me, but even more so, I learned a lot from the discussions with my audience and their contributions to the topic. I don't want to repeat the main points of my presentations here. You can access them via the websites of the host universities that you see over here. In German, though. Rather, I want to share my main observations with you in terms of five central messages. Here is message number one. Digitization enhances teaching and learning, or put negatively, it solves many problems of higher education. As I wrote in my book, education is in many ways deeply entrenched in the 20th century. It is resistant to changes, and apart from the use of PowerPoint, many teachers still teach like a hundred years ago. Look at this message by the president of Harvard University from 2013. One problem of teaching, among many others, for example, is the lack of transparency and the low degree of quality management. I believe that teachers from all over the world do their very best to provide their students with material that represents the state of the art of their subjects. They are engaged, I hope at least. They are up to date, they are careful, and they want all the best for their students. But who makes sure that they teach the right stuff? Couldn't it be that they make mistakes or that they are a little bit outdated as far as their subject-specific knowledge is concerned? In a traditional scenario, no one would notice. Traditional teaching and learning takes place behind closed doors and apart from a handful of students, there is no control. In a digital scenario, by contrast, the content is now on the web, ready for permanent surveillance. And in videos, you can even be seen while you present something. Mistakes, like the one I made in a video about writing systems, when I accidentally swapped two alphabets in a presentation, are noticed by the global community, that is, by you, within seconds. So, the content I present is under permanent inspection. This makes teaching transparent, and I feel this is one of the biggest achievements of digitization. So digitization, and this is my first and most general message, enhances the quality of teaching and learning and helps solving many problems of education. Let's now look at another aspect which I want to discuss under the heading of Free Your Lecture. Once you have digitized your main content and supplemented it with digitized flanking material that helps your students in content acquisition and online learning, new scenarios of teaching emerge. These scenarios where teachers are no longer sage on stage but guide on the side, where teachers do not deliver content but practice with their students, where teachers are on par with their students, not only lead to much better results, as we now know from longitudinal studies, but they also lead to an extremely high degree of teaching satisfaction. In a standard lecture, well, I shouldn't call it lecture anymore, with say 150 students, I normally talk to about 75 students now, individually, standing, no, kneeing in front of them. I can see their progress, I can help them as never before. And you know what? My teaching satisfaction is now so high that I long for the next in-class phase as soon as the current one is over. So me message number two is clear. Digitization leads to new heights in teaching and learning, or put simple, go digital and free your lecture. But new didactics also involves new technologies. So here is my third message. Don't be afraid of new teaching and learning technologies. Take the interactive whiteboard as an example. Many institutions have them. Great. But how do teachers still use it? As a white screen for their PowerPoint presentations. In doing this, they miss so many chances. Using the board interactively, using the board as a place for student votes, 
using the board as a record keeper for research results and so on and so forth. Or take tablet computers or smartphones. Have you ever used them for remote control? Have, uh, have you used an app for data transmission? There are so many wonderful applications that enhance in-class teaching. However, in order to use them as a teacher, you have to learn how to handle them. And even more so, you have to want to learn how to handle them. So my third message is, don't be afraid of new technologies. Make them your new friend. Let's now look at my main message as far as videos are concerned. Learning is not just videos. In 2012, during our first inverted classroom conference here in Marburg, months before I produced my first video, one of the key messages I was taught by my American colleagues was, learning is not just videos. A principle I adhered to from the very start. We need flanking materials such as mastery worksheets, practicals, maybe in some cases a forum, model solutions and many more. And even the videos themselves should be of many kinds. Look at this selection of videos over here. Had the producers of MOOCs of massive open online courses, for example, internalized this message that learning is not just video, maybe their accomplishment rates would have been higher than a mere 5% and they wouldn't have to say we have a lousy product as they did recently. So my message number four is clear. Videos, yes, but not only one format. And furthermore, don't forget the additional flanking material. Well, here is my message number five. It concerns the drivers of digitization. Who can accelerate this development? Who can foster the digitization of teaching and learning? Certainly, or should I better say, unfortunately, it's not our students. Over the years, I learned that students simply take what they get. Whether a teacher uses see-through transparencies and puts them on a 20th century overhead projector, or whether someone produces multimedia learning environments, they don't care as long as the teaching method doesn't affect their credits. Students will not publicly complain about the teaching methods of a teacher, whether modern or not. Can the teachers themselves be the drivers? Well, again, rather not. Most teachers are resistant to changes. They want to do what they've always done. New styles and new scenarios mean that they have to learn themselves. But in such cases, they would normally say, no time. Except the small minority of teachers who enjoy testing new approaches, even at the expense of failures. The majority, majority of teachers will remain silent, hoping that they can continue as long as possible. Perhaps awards could help, but even there the principle is resistance and lack of acknowledgement. What about the government? Couldn't they say, part of the money we supply for education has to be used for digital approaches? Theoretically, this could work. However, there are so many intermediate institutions that in the end, such me measures would not find the right addressees. The only way I see are the universities, the colleges and schools themselves. Their leaders, their presidents, their vice presidents or deans have to be convinced to jump on the train. A wonderful example is the small but potent college in St. Pelton, Austria where the vice president is not only the main driver but also creates digital materials himself. And he gave digitization top priority and made it one of the central goals of this institution, reserving parts of the money that the faculties receive for clearly defined digitization measures. And the other institutions I visited are now planning similar measures. So my final message is, Presidents, vice presidents or deans, please take the driving seat. These are just some of the messages I spread in my previous presentations, where I also added the importance of allowing students to bring their own digital devices and use them in class, or the new intensity of in-class collaboration and many more. 
I hope that my five messages will reach as many as possible viewers and will help those who are interested to open the door for new ways of teaching and learning in the 21st century. And if you are interested, here are the books that we published during the past two years and within which you can find most of our ideas about teaching and learning in the 21st century. Thanks for your attention.